Welcome back to Asian Garden the Table. <laughs> Once again, we are working on the posts for the rest of the raised bed garden. Some of you have raised questions about the wood that we're using, why we're using pressure treated wood, and if it's that safe to use pressure treated wood in a raised bed garden. We'll talk a little bit about why that's okay now. So today we're working on the side posts. Uh, we already finished all of the corner posts that we're going to use for the next six raised bed gardens, but I need to finish the side posts. So to do that, we're, we're again using uh, here some pressure treated two by eights, and we're cutting them up into a couple of pieces. So these are uh, eight foot long that I've cut in half. See, I've kind of beveled the top edge, and then we, we cut another piece into four sections, two feet long, Put the spacer board in between, and then we're using some PVC, inch and a quarter PVC pipe uh, that we're going to put in between here where the other boards go together, and that's going to be the support system for our overhead trellis. So we put the spacer board in between, we set the other board on the top, we line them up, we put the carriage bolts through, boards, like that, like that. Flip it up, set the spacer post in the middle and two of the bolts, oops, two of the bolts go through that board, that pole, like that. So that's what's going to hold up the trellis. We use the hammer. Bang those through. Washers. Nuts. Washer, nut. Here we just grab our ratchet and we tighten those bolts up. And that's it. And that's the post for the sides. So I've got the, the gap here on either side to support the side boards. Again, we're using a 2x12, so I, I cut this bottom board and, and set it in between at a place where we'll have the right distance for the two boards that we're putting in for the side boards and the trellis support here. The trellis poles will come in here and we'll drill a hole through it and then I'll take this bolt out and we'll go that will go through the trellis system which will support the, the load for the trellis system. So we have viewers want to know why we didn't choose the blocks they sell in Home Depot. Remember the block I show you that they used to support the boards as a raised bed? All right, so that's what you're talking about. So Home Depot sells these. Yes. Uh, what they call a brown planter wall block. So you could use this in your garden for the corners. It is uh, five and a half inches tall. Um, so to make the height of a raised bed that we're doing, we're, like I said, we're going uh, almost two feet tall on the raised bed. 
We'd have to stack these up. They wouldn't be stable, uh, even if we ran a piece of rebar down the center. Uh, just wouldn't stack up high enough for us and wouldn't be, wouldn't be useful. Plus, there's no way with that system to support the trellis structure that we're going to put in there. Uh, again, we're going to put trellises over the whole garden. So uh, we want to be able to support that trellis system at every post. And to do that, we need to have something to attach them to. So having these posts go deep into the ground, two feet deep into the ground, uh, helps us to support the two feet above the ground and will also support the, the, the trellis system that's going to be holding up all the vining plants. So we needed something that was a lot bigger structure, a lot stronger structure than, than these things that you can buy at Home Depot. Yeah, we have a lot of storm and hurricane here, so right. we high, need a really winds, strong one. There, there's no way that a system like that would support the, the, the height of the raised beds that we're building. The, the things would just fall apart. Uh, this is not going to fall apart. At least I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree, honey. Yeah. There's a reason why we choose what we yeah. what we chosen. Yeah, we, we put some thought into this. You know, Regina and I are both engineers, so we we have a pretty good background in as uh, what's going to work for the our plans. Now, uh, as far as why we used pressure treated wood, uh, a lot of people I shouldn't say a lot of people. Some people have raised questions about why. We're using pressure treated. Is it safe? You know, the pressure treat that they use today is a lot different than what they used 10, 15 years ago. Uh, they don't use arsenic in the pressure treat anymore. It's a copper azyl compound. And the amount of material that's in the wood uh, tends to stay in the wood. It doesn't really leach out. And the amount of pressure treated wood we have relative to the garden size that we have uh, is so small that uh, you're not going to get any appreciable amount of uh, leaching from the wood into the garden. Yeah. We've been running a little bit behind schedule uh, with getting the garden done uh, for good for good reason. Uh, you guys uh, out there have been very supportive of us and, and we've gotten a lot of seed orders. So we've been spending a lot of our time at home packing vegetable seed for you. Uh, so we've, we kind of put this uh, on hold while we're, while we're satisfying all those orders. So thank you guys for all the orders. It's been great. Um, and we're going to keep working as much as we can here on the garden to get things moving along. Uh, Regina has probably showed you that she's planted some plants in the first two raised beds that we built. And uh, we're spending some time here on the weekend, today's Sunday actually, and trying to get uh, some of these posts made so we can finish the garden. Sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six. 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. I still need to make uh, three, Six. Eight, ten, four, two, six, two, eight, two, eight. You got 22 more to go. 22 more. 22 more to go. <laughs> it's a lot of wood. It's a lot of work. You can do it, honey. We can do it. We can do it. We can do it. But, uh, this is my last one of these. I need to go to Home Depot. Home Depot and buy some more of this material so I can cut them up and, and prep those. I need 10 more. So today we're back assembling the corner posts, just uh, putting the trellis supports into the corner posts. You can see that we cut them to two foot length and then we pre-drill two holes in them. And those two holes are gonna line up with the holes that we drilled in the post. And that's gonna hold this in position. One of the bolts at least is also gonna provide support for the trellis pole that's gonna go inside of here. These are just bushings for the, the pole supports. And we're gonna use uh, top rail, inch and three eighths top rail, which is a fence top rail, as the trellis structure. So those poles are gonna come up out of here. They're gonna have a hole through them and the, the bolt is gonna hold it in place. Flip it over so you can see. So I'd countersunk these holes on the side of the post here so they wouldn't stick out. I didn't want anything on the outside of the post 
sticking out where someone might catch their leg. Got the, the two holes drilled and countersunk into the post with the nuts and washers in place. You see on this side the carriage bolts are going through the, the PVC pipe. And then we still, here we have the slot for the, the two boards that are going to form the side walls of the raised bed. Hunter, can I borrow the hammer? So we finally finished the 48 side posts and the, how many? 24. So we finally finished the 48 side posts and the 24 corner posts that we need for the next six raised beds that we're going to build. So all the building part of it is done, now we can finally go back to the digging part of it. So next I'll be out there with the tractor and my post hole digger making holes in the ground, lining things up and getting these posts set so we can finish the other six raised bed gardens. Thanks for watching, be sure to subscribe and like our channel. And don't forget to go to AsianGardenerTable.com to shop for your vegetable seeds and cooking wok supplies. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again.